thank you for taking a minute out today. Sure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So you're a very busy person, author, speaker, you're, you're a coach. And, and I'm curious, the last three years, COVID was quite a thing for all of us to survive. And it did its own thing to all of us. So I'm curious, how did you survive that time period? And how has it changed the way that you approach things now? Thank you for asking that question. And, and thanks for having me on your show. Sure. Um, Joe, it's kind of interesting. I was in corporate um, and I knew I was going to be starting my own business. I just didn't know when. Yeah. And it was like the window of opportunity opened right then. Um, and before COVID happened, I was thinking, I'm going to tell my leader, maybe by the end of this year, I'm going to be launching this journal and doing all this because he knew I was working towards that. And all of a sudden, I worked at Southwest Airlines for 25 years. So okay. that was my career off and on. I would I, I was there. And I'm one of these girls that I learned at Southwest that when challenges happen, that's the a window of opportunity. And so I used it as a window of opportunity. I got amazing cash package to retire early and, and to take, you know, I was like, well, there it is. You know, yeah. it's kind of like when you put it out there and you want to do something and then everything I knew I wasn't ready. So the lesson I learned from COVID is be ready. And when the opportunity is there, take it. And the opportunity came and I had been working on getting licensed on my um, journal uh, with Gallup. And we had just gotten that license in June of 2020 and the opportunity came in July and I just, this is it. Wow. So, yeah. That's the half of the trick in life is timing, you know? It I, really is. It really is. Yeah. I, I remember that movie with Gwyneth Paltrow called Sliding Doors where they showed, do you remember that? Yes. Where it's like, yes. What, what would have happened if you did go and you did? It's it's fascinating how that works in life. But yeah, that's interesting. And I hear that a lot about the pandemic. There was a lot of silver linings. It doesn't take away. Mm -hmm. I think there's like a buyer's remorse. People are like, well, it shouldn't. This has no bearing on what happened. And we know that, you know, it yeah. was bad. But I think for all of us individually, it was a time for us to do the whole carpe diem thing. You know, are we going to take advantage of this time? Or are we going to do what we want to do and get things done in our lives? Or are we going to wait? And, and I don't know. It's just, it, it was a philosophical moment for us to get to that crossroads or that fork in the road and decide what we wanted to do. Yeah, I think opportunities like that, what I learned at Southwest is every time we went into recession, that was a time to grow. That yeah. was the time to be ready. And so you're saving in your good times, like you're in the bad times. So when the bad times hit, you're ready. You've got yeah. your, you've got everything kind of lined up. Absolutely. You've been thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get to the essence of what you do on a daily basis. And if I was to hypothetically put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day at a grade school, and one of the children looks up and asks you, what do you do for a living? How do you answer them? I help people birth their purpose and live it out daily. So if a third grader is asking me that, I'm going to say, tell me your favorite thing to do at school. And she might say, it's organizing the bookshelves. Great. You should be doing more of that. How can you let your teacher know that that's a gift that you've been given? Because we've each been given an amazing amount of gifts and we just don't use them every day. And I love helping. I work with a lot of leaders in the workplace and I work with coaches but I love working with kids and, and usually seeing them light up when you call out something that they're really good at and helping them use it every day. You know, what's interesting, the more I interview therapists and coaches, it seems like kind of something that's very similar to each other. They're, like with therapy, for instance, I don't think some people understand that they went through trauma in their lives until it's brought up to them. Or maybe some people are so close to who they are, they don't understand what they're actually good at or what's going to make them happy or what's going to clean up things in their lives. Do you ever think about how, you know, coaching is a lot like a therapeutic kind of a thing to help people through? Yeah. I mean, we we talk about what's the difference between a coach and a consultant. And, I mean, a coach and a, a counselor. Yeah. You know, a counselor's working on all the 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 baggage that's come that we created when we were in third grade and somebody, or for me, it was when I was in first grade and somebody told me I couldn't sing. So yeah. I kept that narrative in my life, my whole life. Oh, I can't sing. I just believed it. It wasn't true. Yeah. So what are the narratives that you're keeping in your life? We'll help you identify those and use your, I use Clifton strengths as a tool nor, known as the strengths finder as a tool that I use to help leaders and coaches. But 
I think with counselors, they're they're going more into the psychological part of it, where I'm going back into, tell me a story when, tell me what's blocking you now, tell me where you what your legacy is of where you want to be, and let's help you get there. And nine times out of ten, they hadn't thought about it. Yeah. So when you were in the third grade, what was your dream growing up? What did you want to be? This is funny. I want to be. A, I want to be Barbara Walters. I want to be a talk show host. And now I have two podcasts, which is so funny. Um, And I love speaking. I'm starting to get out speaking. And I just love interviewing people. I'm curious about each person because I know how unique each person is. And so, yeah, third grade for me was I want to be that talk show host. I actually interviewed someone on this platform that's pretty prolific. Her name is Susan Golden. She worked with Barbara and talked about her and said how great she was and and that's all I've ever heard. I mean, that no one's ever said anything otherwise. So it would have been fascinating. But yeah, she definitely took the bull by the horns for sure. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to your childhood. Tell me where you were born and raised. And there's seeds that are planted in us early on. Because yeah. you're definitely you're definitely in a profession where you're giving a lot of yourself. How did these seeds begin? How did they grow into who you are today? I mean take it back to, I had a working mom, you know, who was working back when working moms didn't work. All of my other friends' moms weren't working, but my mom is a go-getter. She's 86 right now, and she just got her degree last year at SMU here in Dallas. So, but she started out, she knew um, when she graduated from high school and got married right away and didn't go get her degree, that that was something she always wanted to have. But instead, what she did was she went out and created her own career path and got into, she was actually a producer at a TV station and then got hired here in Dallas to run the first production company within an agency, which was called Bloom Agency here in Dallas. And then she um, became vice president of broadcast. So I grew up with a mom that had me at the TV station, you know, eating ice cream on commercials and doing things. So she was always paving a new path and she was always showing her femininity in a male world and just being herself but not being pushy Mm -hmm. you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so I grew up with that kind of mom so by the time I was like 15 I was ready to go work go make a difference because I saw her doing that my dad was a little bit more of a sales guy kind of doing his thing but she was out there just breaking glass ceilings and starting new things and I think what she always just believed in, you, you can do whatever you believe you can do and encourage me that way. And my sister's that way as well. And my daughter's now an entrepreneur. My husband's an entrepreneur. My mom became an entrepreneur after she was a broadcast um, VP. But And so I grew up in media. I grew up um, with watching a mom that really didn't give up. And she just kept pushing through to reach her dreams. Even at 86, she kept it. So you you may have answered my next question, which is who's been your role model? Who's been kind of a hero for you? Yeah, yeah there's several people. I always say we have kind of like this a virtual board of directors that we carry with us where we go. And of course, my mom's always had a seat at the table, but there's been different leaders and difference makers at my table that believe in me, that will tell me the truth. Um, And it will guide me and mentors, uh, coaches, counselors, people that really have helped me be my best self. Um, And we continue to work on it daily. It's not, oh, I'm done. You know, this is a a work in progress constantly. So there's not just one person. I see she would be the one if I had to say just one person that has been a role model for me. Um, But I think in the long run, it's been a collective of, of people that have helped me. So you opened up the whole Pandora's box with Barbara Walters. If you could interview anybody alive on the planet now, who would it be? Oh, man. If you really wanted, if I really wanted to challenge myself, I'd say Oprah. I'd love to make Oprah cry. (laughs) I mean, how cool would that be? I mean, she makes all these people cry. And so did Barbara Walters. She would just ask these questions because she's got so much empathy. So she would feel what they're feeling and ask questions that would bring up tears or bring up thoughts and the way she would pause. So I think Oprah, Brene Brown, oh my gosh. Um, 
there's so many people, but those yeah. come to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. yeah. Well said. So what is it ultimately for you? You know, we all have these things that we want to do with our lives. We get up in the morning, we look at our day, we want to accomplish things. What is the ultimate motivator for you? It's to help people change their lives and quit living in deep their day in default and live it by design and know that they're made for uniqueness. And I think when I'm working with leaders and coaches and I see the light bulb moments when they're going, oh my God, that is me. It's like we live in a world where we've been comparing ourselves to other people and we're not supposed to compare. We're not supposed to be, you know, Joe, you've got your unique talents. What are those? You know, you're using them probably right now in your podcast and what you do. But there's so many people out there that don't get a chance to even feel valued or feel like their work is meaningful. And we're in that era, Joe, after mm -hmm. COVID, people are like, I don't want to work here if it's not meaningful work or I'm not feeling valued. Yeah. So let's help everybody feel valued, tie, you know, know their personal mission statement, know what they're about, what is their personal leadership brand and how are they living it every day? And that to me is the ultimate, when somebody comes back to me and said, ah, now I'm taking that trip that you helped me. Now I'm starting that business. Now I'm leader. getting to, well, yeah, it, yeah, it is just really helping be that guide. Yeah, I'm not the hero. I am the guide. I'm there with them, listening and helping them on the journey. And it's essential. So how do you parlay that in your life? You have to give and give. How do you give enough to the, to the client, but save enough for you so that everything is full circle? Yeah, and that is so important. So coming from the airline business, and I was in operations, there's this analogy or metaphor of you got to put the auction mask on you first before you can help everybody else. Yeah. And so I have been, I've been very um, disciplined when I've seen myself not in a good well-being state. And we know from Gallup, there's five areas of well-being. So it's social. Am I getting out with my friends? Physical, how much am I working out each day? So, you know, what is the uh, financial? Do I feel like I've got enough to, to do what I need to do? And I, I know where my money is. And then there's the career, which am I bringing purpose into what I'm doing every day? And the last is community. Am I serving my community? Well, when those five are well, when you're doing well in those five, you're thriving. Right now, we know that seven out of 10 people aren't thriving. And it's because they're not, they don't know that this is all from Gallup. This is research from Gallup that owns the Clifton Strengths and has the, the Strength Finder. And they've been doing this research for 20 years. And so for me, I measure myself weekly. How's my, how's my social? How's my physical? How's my financial? How's my cultural? How's my career? How's my emotional? And then I see what I need to work on each week. And that's what I train my leaders and my coaches to do. So as an author, you know, we all have these moments when we're growing up where there's a book that either makes us want to write or read more, really opens up things for us. What was that book for you? Oh, gosh. I had a list here the other day. of There were so many. There's so many books that I love. Um, the Big Leap is great. Yeah. Um, there's so many business books. I think... I think it's constantly thinking and developing ourselves. A Happy Pocket Full of Money is a great book about just how you look at yourself and your finances and your what you bring into the world. Um, and I mean, I could probably go, oh my gosh, I wish I had my list here handy to show you. Oh, here's another one. Let's see. Um, Discipline is Destiny. Um, and um, I think the other thing I think is... Uh, let me think it was smart brevity. So just how to speak in fewer words and how to make sure that you understand where, where different people are coming from. Absolutely. So those are some of mine. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, in this life that you've led, there's been, I'm, I'm sure so many things that you've had to overcome, lots of accomplishments. So let's say you have a dream tonight. You run into the 20 year old version of yourself and you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom you've gained in your life, what would you tell that younger version of you? I would say, um, you've got this. Just go ahead and jump. And I think probably from my 20s to my mid-40s, I was lacking the confidence. I was just doing what other people told me I was good at. It wasn't until I learned my unique talents 
and had then all of a sudden I had this energy in my co and confidence to say, wait, I can do this. And I think we just recently did a study of uh, female entrepreneurs. And that is one of the things is limiting beliefs. Just, oh, I'm not good enough. I don't, I can't, somebody's got more talent than me. Oh, I can't start my business. Oh, if I get to a million, my family and my friends aren't going to be taking, you know, they're not. So there's a lot of things that come with confidence with women, but I didn't realize it. And so I went on the work to do it myself and see what was going on and get off the treadmill and start designing my day instead of living my day in default. So of all the things that you've done in your life, what are you the proudest of? I would say being a mom, being a wife, being a friend, being a sister, being a daughter. And I think, you know, family is so intrinsic. And you talk about, we talk about community. We talk about that. I love what I do, but I couldn't do it without support of my husband, um, my family. Um, and I think, I think it's just, I'm proud of, I'm very proud of my daughter who's gone through a lot of obstacles and she's now, you know, running her own business and has three young girls that she's raising. And um, when I full, saw that first lemonade stand, I went, there we go. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's yeah. carried, it's carrying down, you know, from my yeah. mom all the way, all the way down. So. Absolutely. So, you know, you're close to all of these clients that you get. What's a common thread with a lot of people that they may not see that, that is, it it's it will take time to fix, but it's very evident for most people that that's the first thing they need to take care of. I think it's our internal thinking. It's how we think of ourselves, how we think of others, and what we put out in the in out there in the world. And most of the time, that's why I love to start with coaching individual in leaders first before I coach all the teams and everybody because I want them to see their unique value and build that out and as you said we talked about earlier you know childhood there's somebody in their childhood that told them something or a former leader that told them something and they believed it so getting rid of those narratives and helping them use words that are kind to themselves because lots of times I'm telling you, you need to put the empathy on yourself you're giving it to they are serving so many people they're not focusing on themselves. And, and that's what they'll tell you. It's, yeah. you know, where is my well-being? Have I eaten right today? Have I worked out? Yeah. Um, because they're just getting on the treadmill and going or, yeah. you know, the hamster wheel. So, yeah, absolutely. So speaking of putting it out there, let's get to the essence of you. Everyone has a perception of you, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you are the one in control of your life. What's your perception of you? Who do you think you are? I think I'm um, caring, innovative, and um, I'm a customizer. So Joe, I'm dying to know about you. You know, I want to customize my conversation to you. Um, if I go to a cocktail party, I'm the one going in and having deep conversations with one or two people. I'm not working the room. I'm the one, and I want to leave saying, man, I just met Joe, and did you know, he he told me all this stuff, and somebody go, well, I've known him for 10 years, I never knew that, and that's what happens when I meet people, because I'm curious, I'm very yeah. curious. Well, and, you know, and going back to Barbara Walters and journalism and, and being curious about things, I got a question, if you could go back in history, any point in history and see an event happen, where would you go, what would you love to see? be a fly on the wall and watch that happen in person. Wow. There's so many, uh, and I, I do like history, but I'm futuristic, so I'm always in the future. Um, I've been studying a lot about female, like Eleanor Roosevelt, and um, how she got through all that she got through in her era, being you know the wife of a president and all everything that went with that. Uh, Winston Churchill's wife, I recently read her bio. So I do enjoy those. Um, if I could go back further, I mean, right now I'm watching that series Chosen and it is amazing and I'm a I'm faith-based person. So being there in those biblical times and watching people watch Jesus and not even know who he was, um, to me, going way back, that would be intriguing. Yeah, that would be interesting. You know, 
I went through an exhibit in D.C., and I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was all this history of Eleanor, and I had no idea certain things and how powerful she was. She was quite a figure, and I don't know that people understand that. No, and how she was honored. You know, I think when you contrast the Churchills and the Roosevelts, both wives were totally different. Right when they would go uh, visit bombing areas of the city that had been bombed, because she didn't want to come all dark and solemn. She wanted to say, we're here to speak, you know, uh, hope. Yeah. Um, whereas Eleanor really didn't care what she had on. Um, it was her her words kind of just spoke. So they both had great outcomes as, as wives of presidents of, or prime minister, but they did it differently. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, Dana, if anyone out there wants to learn more about you, um, anything pertaining to your world, hire you, anything along those lines, your books, where can they go? Yeah, so DanaWilliamsCo.com is okay. the best place. And they can just click Discovery Call and we can visit about what their needs are and happy to help. Excellent. Dana, this has been great. Thank you for opening up. Thank, thank you for your time. Best thank of luck you, with Joe. everything. Thank you, Joe. It's great being it. with you. Great yeah. being with you. Take care. Have a good day. Thank you. See ya.